So we come back to the continuation of um, fight two. Here we have a road accident victim that they are sick with intraperitoneal hemorrhage. They asking us in what condition can we have uh, auto transfusion? That is, can we use this same blood that is bleeding from this patient to uh, reinfuse the patient as a result of uh, hemorrhage? So the correct answer to this question is uh, stomach rupture. But as for me, log logically thinking, I think it's splenic rupture because the spleen is like a blood bank and if blood is, if there's bleeding from there, you should be able to auto transfuse it. But they said it's stomach rupture. We will still meet another question later in the course of this particular fight. So let's just keep it at the back on that stomach rupture. Maybe if there's no uh, intracavity uh, content presence, maybe in that condition though. All right. This is a man with a stab wound on the right foot, and they are telling that three years ago he passed the old course of vaccination against uh, tetanus. What is the tactics of the doctor to prevent tetanus in this case? This patient is uh, fully immune, so there is no need to conduct specific prophylaxis, unless in some condition they might need to give some tetanus anatoxin, but in very small units. Okay, again, this is a case we are having uh, like saturated intoxication in this patient. And I said, what's the mechanism of complication development? And they've told us already. So the question, the correct answer is, you know, that citrate actually binds calcium. That's the major mechanism. So citrate binds calcium ions and hypocalcemia in PAs. My cardiac infarction, and you see those signs in this particular question. But that's what's making of action. The action was making of action of citrate, it binds calcium. All right, a 40 year old woman with GI hemorrhage was transferred from brain male of preserved blood again after compatibility tests. After hemotransmission, the condition became worse, and you can see mosul pain together with temperature up to 38.8. So we cannot just go directly and say that this is immotransmission shock because this is not immotransmission shock so and we're having fever of up to 38.8 so according to the core grammar this is the correct answer you know pyogenic reactions will always result in elevated temperature so this pyogenic reaction of uh, medium uh, severity it is not bacteria that is causing this and this is not yet immotransmission shock so it's pyogenic reaction All right, we have a 27 year old patient and laparoscopy revealed a lot of liquid blood in the abdominal cavity. The patient has been found to be bleeding from metenseric vessels of the small intestine and damage to hollow organs has not been revealed. And this was what I was trying to make reference to with respect to the answer that was chosen as uh, stomach bleeding from the stomach. So what is the best way to restore the blood loss? If a patient is bleeding from mesenteric vessels or vessels of the abdominal organ and you cannot find any organ damage, that is there is no contamination of the blood. So you can refuse, reinfuse the patient's own blood back since the patient is developing shock. So that's auto blood reinfusion. Okay, a patient presented to the hospital with a carbuncle of the upper lip. You can see the temperature pronounced. What is surgeon status of choice? We've said before that uh, repeatedly that carbon coal on the face can easily result. One of the complications is cavernous sinus thrombosis, uh, which is to the brain, which is dangerous. So, you want to keep this kind of patient in the surgical uh, department to administer treatment and, if possible, surgery. Well, we have a patient with stomach ulcer that is no longer responding to uh, the usual uh, treatment. So two weeks later, they have constant pain, increasing and resistant to medication. When you're having such resistant medication, you are thinking of a, another, maybe there's been some like uh, metaplasia or change of cells in such condition. That's why patients develop resistant to medication. If you read some previous years of croc, you may find out that the correct answer there is penetration. However, the safest and latest answer based on like 
2024 is malignization. This is probably like a cancerous transformation in the stomach. So I think it's better to choose malignization rather than penetration as in previous years. All right, a 62-year-old male patient complains of intense pain in the right leg. Suddenly arose three hours ago, leg numbness and cold. Now, objectively, the left foot and chain have marbled skin. Subcutaneous veins are collapsed. The foot is cold. Active movement of foot and toes are preserved. Pulse is present only on the femoral artery and there is rough systolic murmur above the femoral artery. So this is uh, a case of uh, occlusion. And here we are talking about the left. So this is, and three hours ago, this is an acute occlusion. Acute occlusion. And since the rough systolic murmur is on the femoral artery, just above the femoral artery, so the occlusion is actually in that femoral particular artery. So this is acute occlusion of the left uh, femoral artery. If it is an acute occlusion of the iliofemoral segment, we may not even have a pulse in the femoral artery. A patient complains about pyrosis. This is heart bone and permanent pain, pain behind the breast bone. The regurgitation, X-ray shines revealed extracircular cardiofunctional anemia. You see, when the cause of pyrosis or heart bone is a sort of uh, near of the esophageal opening of diaphragm, this patient is in need of surgery. So what is necessary treatment tactics is uh, operation in a surgical department. Patient, uh, 18 years old with cranial injury in comatose state, in post period gets tired quickly, non-productive in dialogue, beginning answers two to three questions. Gets tired and cannot understand questions. This is a patient starts seeing which psychotropic should be given to the patient to prevent psychoorganic syndrome. This patient is, you need something to actually stimulate this patient. And what the drug to use there is, a, is neurotropics, neurotropics. Other ones, um, this is not a patient that is depressed, you need drugs, it's neurotropics. When they are telling by patients in such conditions, yeah. neurotropics. Some students even <laughs> try to use neurotropics to boost their mental power, but the best thing is to train yourself, not to use drugs. Uh, a 45-year-old male patient with acute abscess of left lung uh, suddenly develop acute chest pain. And if a patient is having abscess, and then if you read further, they, they told us that left lung collapse, but more importantly, a horizontal fluid level. This means that the abscess must have, must have, must have, must have act like abscess bursts into the pleural cavity to have this horizontal fluid level in a patient with acute abscess of blood. So this is abscess burst into the pleural cavity. None of these other options. Okay, they are simply asking us our approach as a, as a surgeon that a patient is having both pneumothorax and splenic corruption. That what, what are we going to do first? What are we going to do first? Already we've established that if it is pneumothorax, one of the things we do is the drainage of the pleural cavity and we have it here in the option. And for the splenic corruption, we will need a laparotomy. So in what order? The best thing to do is first of all to save the, this pneumothorax is not going to take time, just uh, you can pass the tube, it could be passive drainage and so on. And then you go ahead to the spleen. So this is drainage of the left pleural cavity followed by uh, laparotomy. Please, let me tell you the other option because I'm convinced in this question is this left-sided thoracotomy immediately uh, followed by laparno. Don't forget we always use the word drainage of left brain cavity in uh, pneumothorax. Alright, we have a patient that is having not very clearly defined short, uh, short things and chosen signs. I know that these signs are usually uh, conducted in patients when you suspect any disorder of calcium. So a patient is having toxic mixed goiter for uh, a 35 year old patient, mixed goiter. ECD shows prolonged QT interval. Patient is professionally diagnosed with latent tetany. So already they've yeah. even further narrowed our mind down to estimate the level of calcium. So what study will we allow you to confirm the diagnosis is 
simply determination of blood calcium and, and phosphorus, phosphorus, phosphorus. I know that calcium is responsible for the uh, for the plateau, for the plateau. Okay, a patient with bilateral hydrothorax has repeatedly undergone pleural puncture on both sides. Pleural puncture. After regular puncture, the patient condition has become worse. It present with fever and chest pain. So you are thinking right now of maybe like an infectious complication. The next day, the attending physician performing pleural puncture revealed some pulse on the right. Yes. So what is the mechanism of acute right-sided and pyema development? The mechanism is a result of regular uh, pleural puncture and that could only be by contact and aspiration. Other, some of all these other means are different means of, uh, 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 how do I put it, different means of transferring one agent or the other in the organism, but in this condition is by contact, regular aspiration. 25 year old patients admitted with chest trauma, clinical and x-ray examination have revealed tense pneumothorax on the left. Again, we are having pneumothorax in this condition. What emergency treatment will you give? This again, you need drainage of the pleural cavity. Right. The 38 year old patients lifted the LV object. You know, when I am talking about lifting LV objects, the, the weight is associated with the leg pain and radiation and so on. You are thinking of something that has to do with the intervertebral discs. Here they use the word mistakenly as intercostal, but it still doesn't change the fact that they are trying to talk about intervertebral. That resulted in pain in the lumbar part of spine, but it's posterior surface of leg. Reading, this is a patient with pathology of intervertebral disc. At that differential, there's um, polyneuritis, but usually along um, peripheral nerves. But here, yeah, actually, with pain, is pathology of intervertebral disc. All right. A patient is having popliteal artery embolism. When you localize the region of the emboli, where the, this acute arterial insufficiency means that the, the emboli has actually reached a point in which there is a small vessel diameter compared to it and is causing some occlusion. Our uh, approach there is to do an embolectomy. embolectomy. You need to remove the emboli. Okay, 38 year old patient on uh, develop pain in the left side of the chest suffocation moderately grave condition bread sounds on the left cannot be auscultated chest radiography shows the collapse of the left lung or uh, up to half you know probably you are thinking right now of uh, spontaneous pneumothorax spontaneous pneumothorax that's what i think in this case and what kind of treatment should be administered you need to do like a a, a tube form of drainage again that is i here is the drainage, and that is the answer that feed there is this passive thoracostomy, passive thoracostomy. So it's a pure cavity drainage, like a tube drainage. How do we conduct a functional test in a patient that is having uh, superficial vein insufficiency, dilatation of superficial veins of left shin and thigh with pigmentation and trophic skin as well? So the one the all these other tests, apart from the Lebon test, are used for uh, deep venous thrombosis, for tests for deep venous thrombosis. It is the Lebon test that you can use for superficial and deep vein thrombosis. So this is the correct answer in this case. We may meet this question on different occasions. All right, this is uh, pediatric surgery. A neonatologist examined a full time mature baby revealed the shortening and external rotation of the newborn sclerosis trinity. Clinical examination received positive otolarnin sign. This is the major thing we need in this question for the answer. In, in positive otolarnin sign, what it means that after the the maneuver, there is you will, the the surgeon is going to hear a sound or the person carrying out the procedure is going to hear a sound after pulling the head of the femur. There is going to be like an arterial movement of the head of the femur into the uh, hip joint, and it will give a sound. It will give a sound, and that sound would only occur if there is already a congenital posterior displacement of the femur. So the action is what is the likely diagnosis in this condition? After this experiment, we know that that is a congenital hip displacement. It will only be positive if there is an anterior movement of the head of the femur into the 
into the uh, hip joint. A child is discharged from the surgical department after conservative treatment of invagination, intestinal invagination. What would the doctor actually tell the mother? Okay, it's good to know that the mother should follow strict feeding regime. All right, you know that ordinarily for the treatment of cerebral edema, one of the major uh, agents that are given is manitol. Manitol is an osmotic diuretic. But here in this 10-year-old patient with suspected cerebral edema, the patient is tachycardic and hypertension is present in this particular patient at the same time. So according to the question, the, uh, the reason why I think that for some mind is the right answer is that what is needed in this condition together with this hypertension in this patient is a first form of diuresis, first form of diuresis. And uh, for some mind we help us to achieve that, lowering the blood pressure at the same time decreasing the cerebral edema. So the answer here is no money to consider the fact that patients have an hypertension at length side and choose for a All right, this is a 40-year-old patient with operation in the lumbar region. And thereafter, the temperature rose again. And when you're having signs of intoxication and so on, the patient that is having phlegmon or any form of infection in one part of the body and suddenly develop later intoxication signs and so on, you are thinking of sepsis. I think of sepsis as a complication in that. So, uh, what complication develop in this patient is sepsis. Sepsis. A 37-year-old patient, acute pain and bleeding in the middle third of the right thigh. So you, you are thinking right now that if you can try to occlude the femoral artery in this patient, that the bleeding would um, stop temporarily. So massive bleeding. What first aid is to be administered? And you can stop. You can. Femoral is one of those arteries that you can uh, digitally stop, like temporarily. So the first stage is to digitally occlude the femoral artery. If it to be bleeding from popliteal artery and so on, you could use a tourniquet at the lower part of the thigh to stop. But since you're having the occlusion of femoral artery, is the best answer in this uh, patient. This is similar to the previous question of a man who had completed his. Uh, tetanus vaccination over a period of uh, like three years ago. But yeah, this is a 40-year-old builder, foot injury, got in the morning same day. The wound was washed with water. Three years ago, he was vaccinated against tetanus. The only difference is that he didn't tell us he had complicated, but he said he was vaccinated. Examination established satisfactory condition of pain. The left was slightly edematic. There was a stab wound on the sole. In order to prevent tetanus, it is primarily required to you see that particular option is not here, so you can give some in this place some anatoxin in a uh, small unit. And so you give an intravenous injection of 0.5 mL of cetanus anatoxin. That's the correct answer in this uh, patient that is having left food, edematic process, and so on. All right. Nine year old boy fell from a tree. And reading further, you discover that the extra discourse showed a comminuted depressed fracture of occipital bone and definitely you are thinking that this is a patient that this is no longer conservative treatment the patient that needs surgery fracture of the hospital bone so surgical intervention all right what is the most likely uh, diagnosis in this patient that uh, you're having severe itching with five year patient burning pain in the eye skin redness in the outer corners of papilla fissure and so already you are thinking that you see uh, papilla conductiva is aparemi quaggy you are thinking this is a patient that has conductivitis but is it acute or chronic conductivitis uh, i can only just try to see what i think it to differentiate since they are not telling about the time and so on that the presence of these uh, moist cracks must have been a prolonged process. Most people that have conductivitis usually may have all these other features, but this are pyramid and so on, but not usually uh, these cracks. And that might have been a result of constant maceration. So this is a patient with chronic conductivitis. When they're asking you, when they're asking for like uh, ophthalmological relations to a patient that is having uh, rheumatism. I see this question several times. Objectively, weak periconia injection, flattening of iris relief, iris discoloration, 
and so on even though there's iris in the option the complaint of the patient is the left eye actually at night vision impairment photophobia lacrimation one major association in a ophthalmology patient with rheumatism is iridocyclitis so it's inflammation of the iris and the ciliary and the ciliary body and the ciliary body so i think the ciliary body in this case is what is going to be leading to the weak pericardial injection so that's iridocyclitis is always the safer answer to choose in this kind of case all right is a patient perforated appendicitis and disseminated fibroprevalence peritonitis Postoperative period was uneventful, and but on the ninth day, patient developed low-grade fever, abdominal pain, and so on. Don't forget that patient had perforated appendicitis and disseminated fibroprevalence peritonitis. So the patient that this and the patient is then having fever some days after the surgery. They are thinking, um, like maybe there is. They said there's uh, ultrasound revealed a fluid formation of nine by ten centimeter large. I think of an abscess in the intestine and I think that's what they mean by interloop in that condition. So this is inter intestinal abscess being formed in this particular patient, interloop abscess. Uh, the last question in this uh, particular uh, session, this particular video and then we continue immediately thereafter. A patient, 81 years of age, complains of constant urinary excretion in drops feeling of fullness in the lower abdomen and examination above pubis, the spherical protrusion. And please take note of uh, dullness of percussion sound with positive uh, suprapubic punch. This will help it to differentiate uh, paradoxical uh, isturia from acute urinary intention. Here they are still telling at least patients is still having some drops and so on. Patient with acute urinary intention it's not going to be having this positive superpubic point. This is because urine is actually moving in opposite direction. Yeah, the patient may have dullness and support. So dullness over um, percussion sound over the pubis and positive superpubic punch is typical for paradoxical ichuria in a patient that is having uh, constant urinary excretion in drops. So paradoxical ichuria simply means that when the patient wants to urinate, large amount of the urine is going back up like a retrograde movement retrograde movement so we stop there for now